Hi, I'm Levi Richards with Formula Champion Show Feeds and uh, Kambach Feeds, and today we're here with Brian Forrest from Mechanicsburg, and Brian's with, been with our sales team for a long time and uh, kind of one of our team of experts guys and uh, fully operates uh, Forrest Show Pigs. So thanks for jumping on with us today. You bet, Levi. Glad uh, to be here. Yeah. yeah, so something we want to talk to you about, about today is, you know, we've, we've done another segment that kind of gears towards the breeder's end on feeding yeah. these baby pigs. Um, you know, now that we're going to be selling them to the 4-H'er, um, you know, where we're going to go from there. Mm -hmm. So we've done some work here and, and given the, the smooth design line, as we like to call it, a bit of an upgrade this year. Yeah, um, excited I, about that. Yeah, yeah, you want to talk about maybe some of the, the updates on the nutrition side and then I'll talk about, you know, some of the, the actual products. Yeah, I mean, on the nutrition side of what we've done with smooth design is uh, I think we've taken a very good product and, and taken the next step to make it better. And as you look at it, you're probably not going to see huge changes in necessarily protein, lysine, fat. Um, but if you dig deeper in, you know, some of the micronutrients and the sources and some of the uh, amino acids that are further down the line those ratios have changed. Uh, you know, we're looking at all uh, organic um, trace mineral packages in there. There's some small things that we think are going to make big difference, really put us over the edge and make us, you know, continue to be a great value in the show feed industry and why we're doing those things. So yeah. I'm excited about them. Yeah, me too. And I think there's a lot of excitement among our sales team and the people that are, you know, kind of behind the scenes too. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, it's great. So, and, and another thing that we did was, um, you know, there's so much demand for these meal type feeds in the industry, um, you know, especially in this part of the country. We now offer every single one of these smooth design products in meal form. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge step uh, and, and makes it, you know, all the more trendy. Uh, and we still have some available in pellets. So just to go through the, the product line real quick, we have the, the pig popper um, is our 23%, our but also high fat uh, product more geared for like sale prep and then we can use again at the end and we may talk about that here in a little bit but that one's available as a mini pellet or a meal and then we've got a, an 18 available as a, a standard pellet or meal and then a 17 meal a 16 pellet or meal and a 14 meal mm -hmm. so um you know that's kind of a, a big old giant plethora yeah. of products there um i guess you know just from the start when we just bring home, you know, these these baby pigs from sales. What do we want to put them on just to get get going? Really, the catch all with that would be your Smooth Design 18, mm -hmm. and whether you choose the pellet or the meal, that's really the best place to start when you get home because it's probably a step down from what the breeder's been feeding them. We're right there at it, and it gives that that pig a chance to to be a pig and grow and put on, uh, you know, hit its genetic ability as far as terms of muscle and leanness and give it a good start on its growth curve. Yeah. Is where would be there. Well, it's also available with Safeguard. If yes. you want to buy a complete feed with Safeguard already in it, it's the 18 meal. And it's always so. good to get your pig on a deworming program that you put it on, even if it just got dewormed a week or so before you got it. This yep. way you know where you're at with stuff. So right. I'm a big fan of that. So we'll stay on the 18 then, you know, for a good period of time, maybe up to what, 120, 150 pounds before we really yeah. want to start diving in and it you know it varies from pig to pig yeah. you know we could get one that that we really like and it's got great big great build but it's really kind of built just harder muscled sure so if you go a little harder muscle route you're probably going to come off that 18 at 100 pounds or a little below and okay. then you want to step your protein down mm -hmm. now if you get one that you're feeding for the long term and you think it's a little greener and we got to keep building that yeah. we might be on an 18 to 200 plus so you know years ago we kind of more regimented about we're going to feed an 18 till this poundage and then we're going to go to 16 and then you do this and that now you really got to feed to fit the phenotype you yeah. anybody ever say that yeah a couple times <laughs> <laughs> so you got to have eyeballs on the pig in this case yep. and anticipation is another word that i think is really big in the show industry so you got to whether it's yourself that's developed that over time through judging teams or just raising livestock and seeing where they're going to be a week from now and making your feed adjustment now is going to help you a ton to do yeah. that. Um, and those are things that, you know, as our team of experts, we like to think we know how to do it. And I'm sure we don't bat, you know, a right. thousand on it. But, yep. you know, as we're looking forward, that's kind of when you ask, well, where does it need to be? It's not as simple as calling or texting your salesman and saying, hey, my pig weighs 140 pounds. There's you know 90 days left to fare what where should i be right it, there's that actually <laughs> there's just a lot more that goes yeah. into it so well, and, and while you're on that real quick and not to interrupt but mm -hmm. we actually added a new feature to our new website so if you go to formula of champions uh, com, you can go to the bottom right corner and there's a little purple tab 
that says feed recommendations. You click on that and you can actually upload uh, pictures and videos of your livestock and send them right to us because I would so much rather us give advice based off the build of the animal and not what it weighs. Yeah, that helps so, a bunch if yeah. we can get that done. So sorry, you can jump back in. That, that's good, that, that's, that's a, a good bunch. place to do it. So yeah. yeah, so we were just talking about using, most things come home on that 18, and then you were talking yeah. about where do you go from there? Yeah. And quite honestly, that's where we get into feeding the phenotype. Yeah, uh, which has become kind of one of my favorite expressions in, in product uh, placement. but. Um, so the phenotype would be the physical build and physical characteristics of the animal. You know, we talked about one that's super mm -hmm. defined and rock hard or one that's a little bit plainer, lighter muscled. Um, the phenotype would be what it looks like, how it appears. So, you know, then based on knowing that, I guess, how do you know which product to use? We've got the 18, 17, mm -hmm. 16, 14, and even pig popper. Yeah. Well, as the, as you got the, the harder muscle ones, the lower down the protein scale that you want to go. And those guys generally will soften up with that because, you know, lower protein is going to not push them to be as hard, but also you're going to probably pick up a little more energy in those diets. And that's really what we got to get to is energy, mm -hmm. which we're talking about energy basically from corn or fat, mm -hmm. just helps to soften and mellow that muscle out a little bit. And that's what we're doing in some of the lower proteins. The smooth design 14 is kind of, yeah. you know, the extreme end of that. And, you know, we probably don't need to be there on any of them until you're 120 pounds plus sure. and it does take a little time for that to happen so on the flip side if you've got that greener pig and again you know I know we talked about in the breeder segment a little bit yeah Paling is not going to be as readily available, however your county or your state or where shakes out on that. Yes. We're going to have to be aware of that and we're going to have to have some fresher muscle being fed into it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to have to hit it right from the beginning and kind of keep going. Yep. Um, the ability to freshen one up at the end, we'll still have some of that. The mm -hmm. tools are going to look a little different. Yep. We can do that. Yep. But you're going to have to plan a little differently for it too. So we may be feeding 18 longer yep. um, and then you get to the kind of the in-betweens the 17 meal the 16 meal or pellet I both have great places for me I you know the 17 meal is probably has the most broad application of any of the the complete feeds that we sure. have um, so if you're ever in doubt mm -hmm. put 17 smooth design meal on there and you will not go too far wrong one way or the other yeah. so it's actually 17's become one of the number one selling products in the whole line and people yeah. People have asked, why do you keep the 17? You have the 18, you got the 16, you're, you're kind of on both sides of it, but the 17, like you said, just fits right in between and for an all-purpose feed, you know, that you can just depend on. That's become yeah. a really popular product. Yeah, so. and you know, over the past few years, I feel like some of these complete feeds from competitors and whatnot, sometimes they're getting kind of watered down and dependent on supplements too much. Mm -hmm. With the changes we've made and where we've always kind of valued is Kambach, these are really, these feeds are truly nutrient dense. Yeah. I know there's some others that use that term and I don't know, I feel very good about applying it to ours. Yeah. And you know, we're family owned, we're not least cost in any Thing. these mm -hmm. things are staying firm and true and they, they stick to our values so I think that's kind of that's also important when you're you're buying your show feeds and trying to get the most out of what you're spending for yeah. them so you bet you bring up a good point because we really do we, we dot every I across every T to be able to just uh, kind of stamp that maximum fortification on every product yeah. um, you know and like you said you know we we don't heavily depend on the supplements for the program to work but we do have a great line of supplements that's I right. want to kind of highlight too um, so, you know, we've got some that we can use towards the end to kind of dial these things in. A couple higher protein options would be like the, the hard drive or afterburner. Right. Um, how would you decide which one to use? Um, the hard drive is a 34% protein. Yep. And um, if I was looking to build some mass or just really kind of get some spread on one, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to lean towards the hard drive. Okay. They're going to eat that and, you know, just kind of fill out and bulk up a little bit. And they'll still trim up a hair, but you're mostly getting the bulk out of that. Yep. Where the afterburner, yep. uh, you might build a little bit of muscle, but what you're really getting is just you're going to get definition, you're going to mm -hmm. clean their their jawline up yep. and they're gonna look cool and I have found that you don't really burn off their ribs or, or give up flank to do it it seems to take it from the places it needs to is right over that loin edge and out through that head and neck area just yeah I would run that against any supplement going on that that's just it does an awesome job that way yeah, as yeah, far yeah. as the afterburner does and you know the hard drive you want spread and you want some power in there and you may even sprinkle some of that in a little bit early as you're going especially as we talked about feeding the greener ones and making sure we're there at the end yeah you know the right spots if you're anticipating and you're hitting that you might yeah. use that somewhat early too well you know and I can see those two products having a lot more use on the pig side this year without having paline oh, you know sure. to kind of fall back on I think those are two products we're going to probably be looking at mm -hmm. quite a bit so 
Um, so just to spin it a little bit, you know, the opposite direction, what if we're looking to add some fat? I know we've got a couple products, the Moonshine, the Power Bloom. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, how do you choose there, or is it personal preference? Uh, it's a little bit personal preference, but okay. pigs do put on fat a little different with them. With the dried fat and the Power Bloom, it really helps with consumption. Okay. I mean, you get in a time where they're not wanting to eat as well, a little bit of that on top will go a long way. Um, you'll get some uh, you'll get some flesh over their ribs, and you'll get some look there. Um, as compared to the moonshine, again, that helps with consumption too. They like yeah. that, but it's a little different flavoring there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether we got cherry or got the caramel, both good options. Uh, the fat lays on very, very smooth. Either way, you want to go there because we're using um, the right kind of oils to make that happen. So, yeah. it's a mostly personal preference, but kind of how you're set up to feed too. Okay. So that's um, yeah. Just a balancing act with that. Yeah. And not to jump backwards or go backwards too much, but we talk about personal preference. I want to ask you and get your take on it. You know, we have all these meals now and we still have some pellets. Um, it, do they work differently? Is it personal preference there? Well, I mean, how do you how do you pick your pellets in a meal? It's perception to me, okay. um, and and I buy into it too. My personal perception, and I can't give you any science to back it up, mm -hmm. is that pigs will consume the meal feeds at a little bit higher rate. Um, there may be a little more wastage in the corners. Um, with that higher consumption, there's a perception that you get more depth of body, depth of flank, mm -hmm. just a little more overall oomph to them. Okay. Um, and there might be some reality to that perception. I mean, that's where it kind of comes from over time. Uh, also, I'll feed pellets too, and pellets, my personal perception is they feed just a little bit trendier, if you will. They're a little pigs stay a little sharper over the loin edge, stay yeah. maybe a little more defined. Um, it, again, no science to that perception, mm -hmm. the way we feel about it. Maybe different feeds that have been formulated over time give lead to those perception, but ours are the same either way. Mm -hmm. Really at the end of the day, it's what your pig's going to consume. Okay. And you feel good about it. I mean, there's slight differences, but I'm good either way. All right. So, well, yeah. cool. So I'm glad you talked about their gain because it's kind of a good segue into the last couple supplements to yeah. talk about. If they're gaining too good, mm -hmm. which is, is possible, yeah. um, and we need to slow them down a little bit. We've got Filler Up, which is a pellet, or we've mm -hmm. got the Winner's Full Fill, which is kind of a more of a swine-only type product. Yeah. Um, do you have a personal preference there? Do you? Well, they're similar and they're different. Okay. I mean, they both help slow down. They both provide some extra fiber to keep the animal feeling full mm -hmm. as we do it and yeah. content. And at the same time, full fill will um, helps meet some nutritional needs. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's fortified to the point where it's worth one pound of full fills about a pound and three quarters worth of nutrition of a complete feed. Okay. So if you really need to pull things back but you want to make sure they got everything to have good skin and hair and good feet and all that, full fill is a must to use in that. Yeah. All right. Where you use the filler up is more, it's more dramatic as far as a show day kind of blow them up and, and, and just fill them up and get that extra flank and that extra spread to the rib if you will. That, that kind of comes from that deal. At the same time, fill her up a little bit at a time when you're trying to slow them down. If you're feeding, say, four to five pounds a day and you make a quarter to a half pound of that, mm -hmm. fill up, you will get some contentment out of that pig. You'll get some fill in their, in their body. And shoot, if you're feeding less than that, that's even a good thing to do. So yeah. that's a, it's a good thing to help keep contentment and keep that, that just that spread in their flank, in their belly, in their rib. Okay. So yeah. That's kind of the way I see those working. Cool. Yeah. One, one more thing that I want to talk about. We've talked about this more on the breeder side, you know, for sale mm -hmm. prep, but we've got this pig popper product. How do we use it again, maybe towards the end? Uh, to kind of dial these pigs in for our fares. Yeah, well, pig popper, and as we go through this and we talk about the different phenotypes, mm -hmm. there's going to be times where you're going to push on some of these green ones, you're going to woe up on some of the fast ones, and, yep. and doing all that, at the end of the day, we got to have them 12 o'clock when we hit the ring mm -hmm. at your county fair, at the jackpot show, at the state fair. To have them 12 o'clock, pig popper is definitely part of that deal. So mm -hmm. if we've got one, we've sat back and we've woed up on them. We've been feeding, you know, two to three pounds of feed a day, and then we got to have that room to go the last, you know, say three weeks. Pig popper needs to be part of that. You bet. And some people are going to read that tag and see it's a 23% and it's high lysine, high fat, and oh man, they're going to rip it up and they're just going to be rock hard. That's not going to be the case. Yeah. They're going to mass up. It's going to go to the right places. It's going to get some over the rib. There's going to be depth of flank to that. It's going to it's going to put it where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So, and again, like when you read that tag though, if it's that heavily fortified, you use a little bit of that. 
some full fill and maybe some rolled oats with it makes a really complete kind of holding diet mm -hmm. that stays fresh. So making sure we keep these things fresh and hitting 12 o'clock is going to be a different challenge this summer. Pig popper has definitely got a place in it, whether you're pushing or woeing. Yeah, so. you bet. Yeah. So if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us on social media and find us uh, on Facebook as Formula of Champions, or you can get on formulaofchampions.com and uh, find some uh, different people within our sales team and on our, our team of experts to be able to contact, or you can reach out right to the office. Uh, we'd love to talk to you soon. Uh, thanks a lot for jumping on with us.